multiple credit card readers are flawed, the Amazon Echo gets creepy, and the voting machine hacking village creates waves. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for August 14, 2018, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire, and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. So if you want access to exclusives, including that brand new Discord server, check out the Patreon link in the show notes below. And special thanks to all of the patrons who stopped by the Hack5 booth at DEF CON and said hello. It was awesome meeting y'all, and I hope that you enjoyed your DEF Con. I know I did. You can tell I lost my voice. <laughs> and now on to the news. At Black Hat in Las Vegas last week, security researchers Leanne Galloway and Tim Unisov from Positive Technologies spoke about newly discovered flaws in mobile point of sales devices from Square, SumUp, iZettle, and PayPal. These vulnerabilities would allow an attacker to steal credit card data, change payment amounts, change terminal value, gain full root control of the point of sale, disable taking chip cards, and pretend to decline transactions while actually running the cards. An attacker could perform man-in-the-middle attacks on the devices while transferring commands via Bluetooth or via mobile apps. They were even able to downgrade the firmware on the point-of-sale systems and remotely execute code. The researchers worry that bad actors could use these devices and scam people out of money. Luckily, in this case, though, vendors are actively fixing the problems. Square explained to news outlets that their third-party provider, which is called Miura, with their M010 reader, were vulnerable but they are also working on dropping support for said device and replacing them. PayPal, SumUp, and iZettle all fixed the vulnerabilities already. On Sunday during DEF CON, two researchers presented their research on a vulnerability within Amazon's Echoes that allowed them to hijack the voice assistant. Researchers Wu Hiu and Qian Wenshang displayed this vulnerability on a second generation Echo device by using a series of bugs to take over and stream audio from the device to a remote attacker and save a file. All of this is done while the device acts totally normal so the user would not notice a thing. Now while this is an excellent example of problems with IoT devices, it's also hard to use in the real world. The hack requires access to the Wi-Fi AP that the Echo is actually connected to and some hardware know-how. The attacker would need his or her own Echo to rewrite their own firmware code to and would use it to attack other Amazon Echoes as well. They then used Alexa interface and Amazon.com website vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting, URL redirection, and HTTPS downgrading to link the hacked Echo with a target's Amazon account. The hacked Echo would need to be on the same Wi-Fi network, which in turn would give it access to the whole home audio daemon on the user's Echo. The daemon contained a vulnerability that allowed for another speaker to take full control. Now in their testing, they were able to root each device that they tried it on. Luckily, the Amazon Echo second generation devices have already received over the air patches. Now the researchers did disclose the vulnerability to Amazon earlier this year, and that fix was released in July. The voting machine hacking village is becoming something of a staple at DEF CON since its first year last year, and it was awesome last year as well. Villages are rooms dedicated to one specific type of hack at DEF CON. So for example, there's an IoT village, there's a car hacking village, a Wi-Fi village, that's one of my favorites. Uh, there's even a lockpick village and a voting machine hacking village. They all exist under the convention umbrella. In this case, the voting machines were donated by organizers for attendees to analyze attack, and infiltrate, and several stories from the weekend surfaced. For starters, after the first day of DEF CON, the convention tweeted that 39 children, children ages 6 through 17, attempted to hack replicas of the SOS websites for six swing states, with 35 completed the tasks. An 11-year-old did this fastest with an SQL injection in under 10 minutes. They were also able to deface the page and tamper with vote tallies. Diebold TSX voting machines were also running expired 2013 certificates, which made them vulnerable to many exploits. And since Diebold machines have easy-to-pick physical locks as well, one hacker was able to reprogram the machine to play back meme GIFs and music after upgrading it to Linux. 
Even poll book machines were hacked. They have easily accessible memory cards that could be replaced so precinct records could be changed. Voters could be added and deleted all within five seconds. And worse, poll book machines keep passwords on the memory cards for supervisors. And those passwords are in plain text. Alongside personal records on voters, including the last four of your SSN, your driver's license numbers, and a lot more. ESNS vote counter machines had active Ethernet ports, which could expose them to hacks, and this is just in the first day of the village. And while so many hacks and exploits were had, the National Association of Secretaries of State rebuked the findings. They state that U.S. states have been hard at work with their own teams at the DHS, Elections Infrastructure Information sharing an analysis center, private National Guard to work on security, and that the pseudo environment at DEF CON does not replicate an actual state election, including providing attendees with unlimited access to the machines. They also included that most of the systems are no longer in use. But according to multiple reports, at least 70% of the machines in the village are in fact used today. Now on a positive note though, the US Department of Homeland Security was on site at DEF CON to learn and work side by side with hackers on election security. Whether or not states have time to upgrade their machines before midterms, which is in two months, is not clear. But putting those machines in the eyes of the public makes everyone more aware of the problems so that we can actually take some action. Patrons, I know I have lost my voice, but make sure to share your favorite stories on the community tab or on Discord. And every single Friday, I will pick three or more top stories for a voting poll that patrons can vote on to be included in next week's show. Patrons also get access to a downloadable audio version of the show, first looks at show topics, polls, discussions just for patrons, behind the scene photos, and now that Discord server, just for patrons at $2 per month and up. So join now to get access to all of these and to help support this show because it is all made by you. Our next milestone goal gets you access to a live video Q&A just for patrons at all levels and gets us closer to doing a second episode each week, which I am super excited about. And also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for supporting and sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. Hit that subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page as well. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet, not on the wall of sheep. Thank you.